If you're getting close to finally retiring, or maybe you have just retired, congratulations. You have worked really hard to get to this point, and now it is all about enjoying your life to the fullest. St. George, Utah is often at the top of a short list of best places to retire for many of our clients, as they find mild climate, low crime rate, and plenty of things to do here. Lower cost of living than most world-class cities and other retirement destinations can make St. George, Utah the obvious choice is likely to allow you to stay retired and not have to get back to work to support your living expenses. Let's get into the top 10 reasons why so many of our clients are choosing to retire right here in St. George, Utah. Reason number one is mild winters. St. George has a desert climate with mild winters, perfect for snowbirds escaping the colder climates. You know, about 10 years ago when I first moved to Southern Utah, you could literally tell the difference. And you know, you would know since you've lived here your whole life, but 10 years ago, you could literally see a difference in traffic patterns. And I worked in retail. I worked with a lot of general public and people who would walk into my store. You could distinctively tell. And like people that I would talk to, uh, pretty much as soon as it got cold in the Northeast, Midwest, uh, parts of really all the parts of the country, like Northern Utah, where you could see a real winter and real snow, a lot of those folks had second homes here. So they would just come here for the winter, spend the winter without having to have a snow plow or a shovel or anything to deal with the snow. And then they would move back to, you know, for the rest of the year once it gets hot here. But I feel like since then, two things happen. One, our population grew. And two, a lot of these snowbirds are no longer flying. You know, as we get older, we just tend to stand in one place and there's no better place in St. George, in my opinion. And, um, you know, the other thing that happened is our population grew so much that it's really hard to tell. The traffic patterns don't really fluctuate as much. It's not crazy with traffic here, but there's not a distinctive difference anymore. You know, one thing that hasn't changed though is our winters are really mild. Uh, most of the winter, you're between 50 and 60 degrees. You do see some snow out in the distance all the way to the north on top of Pine Valley Mountain. So it makes it for a beautiful view as you continue to enjoy mild 60s. But this winter, we didn't even get we didn't even get a dusting of snow. Yeah, and if it if it does snow in St. George proper, you may see a dusting of snow on the ground, and it's definitely like it'll snow overnight. And, and then it's gone by noon. It's gone by noon. That's why we love it here. Reason number two why St. George, Utah may be a great retirement destination for you is all of the outdoor activities. This area offers plenty of opportunity for hiking, biking, golfing, and exploring. So many great day trip destinations like Zion National Park, Snow Canyon State Park, Red Cliffs Desert Reserve, Dixie National Forest, San Hollow State Park and Quail Creek Park if you're into boating. St. George is often called the golf capital of Utah, and there are over 21 incredible golf courses to choose from, and we'll tell you more about that later in this video. Reason number three is affordable cost of living. Compared to other Western states, Utah has a relatively low cost of living, making it an attractive option for retirees. You know, uh, cost of living is something that's highly argued, highly debatable, and for the sake of eliminating our personal bias. Uh, we're just using a third party website to give you guys kind of a relative idea. So um, you could go out to rantcafe.com and check it out yourself. We feel like they have a pretty nifty calculator. So we have a lot of folks moving here from Las Vegas, Nevada, because they're they're so close. So let's, let's check it out. Let's just assume that average income, whether that's individual income or combined income is 100,000. And this calculator uses this scale if you made a hundred thousand in las vegas and you brought that hundred thousand right here to st george how well will it spend so let's check it out so when comparing las vegas to st george that in order to maintain your las vegas nevada standard of living your st george salary would need to be one hundred and ten thousand. so the cost of living here compared to las vegas is apparently 11% higher. I'm actually surprised. I felt like it's more affordable than Las Vegas. So uh, one of the contributors is housing. So if you're renting or buying a home in St. George compared to Las Vegas, it is about 18% higher. Uh, utilities are 5% lower. Food is 6% lower. Healthcare is 1% higher. Transportation is about 6% lower. I could see healthcare because they have way more options. In yeah, that's true. I mean, we still have a very robust healthcare system. Transportation is 6% lower. Goods and services, 24% higher. 
and income is about 4% higher. Although I'm not sure how that necessarily attributes to the cost of living. And you have more options than, you know, if you're in a smaller city, some things are going to be a little bit more. True. Let's, let's check out one of the other cities. Okay. Let's check out... Let's do Los Angeles. So if you're moving here from Los Angeles, I'm sure that this will probably be a, a better comparison for St. George. So if you were making 100000 in Los Angeles, it would mean that you'd only have to make seventy two grand in uh, southern Utah. Or, I mean, essentially, you get to pocket 30000 because... On average, your housing and rent, uh, that's whether you purchase or or lease something, it's going to be about 37% lower here in St. George. Your utilities are 10% lower than Southern California. Food is 12% lower. Healthcare is 17% lower. Transportation is 16% lower. Goods and services are 10% lower. And unfortunately, your income is also nine percent lower here so um, that's a financial win if you're moving from la well financial win amongst many others what else should we try okay let's try new york new york new york city new york wow so if you're moving here from from new york city oh and just so you know we haven't looked at this before so we're all watching it together for the first uh, time this is the first time we wanted to act just as surprised yeah. as we would so uh it is 39% lower. Your, your total expense of living in St. George, Utah versus New York City is about 39% lower. Your housing and rent would be about 62% lower right here in St. George, Utah versus New York City. Your monthly utilities on average about 1% lower, although I feel like it's actually more than that. Your food is 11% lower. Your health care is 21% lower. Transportation is 6% lower. Goods and services, 13% lower. And if you happen to work in New York City, your income there is probably about 10% higher because it's just 10% lower uh, here in St. George. But you know, a lot of our clients that are not retired, they're still working. They often telecommute to work, so they're able to uh, preserve that pay from wherever they're coming from. Mm -hmm. What about, uh, what, what other city should we try? Let's try Seattle. Seattle. So if you're moving here from Seattle, Washington, you can expect to save about 25% on your uh, monthly or annual expenses. So uh, it, you'd only have to make 74,500 to replace your Seattle income of 100,000 right here in St. George, Utah. You would save about 24% on your housing. You would save about 1% on utilities. Although I feel like you know, this This is a big disclaimer. This is just an opinion from this website. If you calculate the actual differences in costs, I feel like you would find that your utilities here in Southern Utah are going to be amongst some of the cheapest in the nation. Uh, but anyway, according to this website, your utilities in St. George, Utah would be about 1% lower than Seattle. Your food is 15% lower than Seattle. Healthcare is 35% lower. Transportation is 18% lower. Goods and services, 13 but you will make about 40% more money if you happen to live and work in Seattle, Washington. Guys, we don't want to bore you with this. Play around with this website. It's quite great. I feel like it gives you a pretty good assessment. But again, if you want to know any specific exact costs, reach out to us. We'd be happy. And with, with any questions, you can reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Reason number four that you may consider moving to St. George, Utah is the growing retirement community. St. George has a large and growing population of retirees with many communities and developments catering specifically to seniors. Historically, St. George has been a retirement destination for many people from all over the world, predominantly people from Salt Lake City and all parts of the Pacific West. The great migration that started around 2020 and videos similar to this one that you may find on our YouTube channel really put Southern Utah on a map. If you are wondering if you will find like-minded people here, chances are that you will run into someone with similar life experiences at the nearest gas station, coffee shop, or grocery store. And overall, we find that most people in Southern Utah are exceptionally friendly. Folks, we absolutely love making videos like this one. And the only thing that we like even more is working with people just like you, helping you relocate into Southern Utah, helping answer any of the questions you may have, and maybe even starting this process remotely. 
If you are even remotely considering relocating to Southern Utah, please reach out to us because we can't reach out to you. We would absolutely love to hear from you. Give us a call, shoot us a text, and send there's, us an email. And there's also a, a link in the description of this video where you could press on that link and it will allow you to book a time on our schedule for a free obligation, free consultation. So what are you waiting for? Reason number five that you may consider moving to St. George, Utah is good healthcare options. St. George has a range of medical facilities, including St. George Regional Hospital and Revere Health. There is a new VA clinic in St. George and St. George Regional Hospital has a massive facility that features some of the best cardiologists, oncologists, orthopedic and sports medicine specialists and transplant services. St. George is definitely a great place um, if you're in need of medical attention because there are literally so many narrow specialists and virtually you know any any doctor you could possibly think of um, the new va clinic is really nice the new facility let's see if they updated their google maps but you could see that new facility in a distance it is super nice modern building and from from what i have heard typically va experiences could be kind of quite mixed, but uh, from what I had heard from our fellow veterans, by the way, thank you all for your service. Our facilities here in St. George are really great as far as uh, VA clinics go. Number six on our list, St. George, Utah is tax friendly. It's important. It's important. Utah is a tax friendly state for retirees with low social security tax and low state income tax. Southern Utah residents also enjoy low property taxes with a primary residence tax exemption that discounts the assessed value of the property by 45%, making your property taxes here about one third of what you would pay in most surrounding Western states, as well as the states that have no state income tax. Yeah, you know, this, this comes up quite often because we talk to a lot of people that are deciding between maybe retiring in St. George, Utah, or moving to the state of Florida that doesn't have a uh, state income tax or like state of Nevada. There are several states that don't have a uh, state income tax or state income tax period or state income tax and retirement income. Utah does, but I find that when you're playing this game, well, for one, you should never play a game with federal government when it comes down to their money. They already decided how much you owe them and you can only try to, um, you know, offset it by, uh, presenting the right set of books. I don't know. Don't quote me on this. Consult your CPA. This is not tax advice. But with that being said, what I'm, what I'm trying to reiterate here is if you look at retiring in a state that doesn't have a state income tax or retirement state income tax, they usually get that revenue somewhere else. Typically that's your property taxes. So, uh, one of the places where Southern Utah really excels is, as Michonne just mentioned earlier, you pay probably about a third um, of your property taxes, especially if you own a primary residence here in St. George, uh, compared to a lot of these other states, like the states that we just discussed. Now, there's a couple other things that I wanted to give you guys just to, just to highlight. Um, we hopped over on smartasset.com to use this to illustrate it. So Utah is a tax-friendly state for retirees, or is it? Um, Utah seniors can claim a tax credit of up to $450 per person against uh, their social security income and retirement income. Um, on the other hand, property taxes and sale taxes in Utah are fairly low. The average effective property tax rate is 0.57% and the average sales tax rate is 6.96%. The state sales tax is 4.85%. Additionally, Utah has no estate or inheritance tax, which could be important because as we reach that age, that's when, you know, typically that uh, comes something that you have to navigate. Is Social Security taxable in Utah? Utah does not exempt Social Security uh, retirement benefits from taxation. So expect to pay a state tax on any Social Security income that's included in your adjusted gross income, AGI. The Utah income tax rate is 4.95%. How high are property taxes in Utah? Uh, Michonne kind of touched on that earlier. So there is a primary resident exemption 
your your property is typically assessed in most places in Washington County at about 0.08%, so just shy of 1%. And then off that assessment, if it's your primary residence, it gets discounted by 45%. So that effective assessment rate boils down to being about half a percent, just a little higher than half a percent of the assessed value of your residence. So it's really really manageable compared to most of California, Washington, Oregon, uh, Illinois. You know, there are a lot of states where that number is really more than triple. How high are sales taxes in Utah? Again, we covered that earlier, including the base sales tax rate of 4.85% and local rates that average 2.11%. The total average rate in Utah is 6.96%. The maximum rate in the state is 12.3%. Yikes. Um, I think that that kind of depends to a specific shopping district. I'm not exactly sure on how sales taxes work, but they're they're pretty minimal. What other Utah taxes should I be concerned about? Utah does not have an estate tax or inheritance tax. It does not have sin taxes on alcohol and tobacco, though its alcohol tax is especially steep, adding up to around twelve dollars per gallon of liquor i don't know who measures liquor in, in gallons of their retirement <laughs> maybe in our 20s but <laughs> there you have it our taxes are pretty manageable convenience is reason number seven why you may want to consider retiring in st george st george utah is a convenient place to live most southern utah communities are within a 10 minute radius of everything that you might need groceries shopping medical and pet services are never more than a 10 minute drive st george utah is growing but getting around st george is far safer and easier than most places that people that move here to retire are coming from with that being said, St. George, Utah is a medium-sized city with metro population of just over 200,000. There are plenty of options for organic produce, wholesale clubs like Costco, all of the standard big box retail, number of restaurants opening seemingly every month. And that is, if that isn't enough, we're just two hours away from Las Vegas and about four hours away from Salt Lake City to the north. I just wanted to show it to you guys here on a map. If we look at St. George proper um, on Google Maps, it doesn't look like a spaghetti bowl of noodles. And one big thing to consider as, as we retire, as we begin to slow down, how do we get around? You know, if the things, if you're just thinking about retiring right now, think about, you know, if, if, if driving might be something that you no longer enjoy, um, what will that look like 10 years from now? So I think it's always important to look out, look out in the future and uh, make sure that you're safe driving. You know, you don't feel like um, there's maybe reckless drivers on the road or like things a, are just too like complicated. Like fast paced driving. Like our infrastructure is not really built for it. We've just got one, you know, I-15 and just what a handful of exits, yeah. four or five exits. And there are a handful of main arteries in the city that you may experience some traffic. But when I say traffic, trust me, it is nothing when you compare it to LA, New York, Chicago, or any, any of the major cities that a lot of our clients are coming from. So I would safely tell you that St. George is a convenient place to live in terms of you could get literally everything that you may need within a 10 minute radius. It is not the most designed for walking so if you're used to living somewhere where you could walk to most places or use public transit uh, there are several age-restricted communities that have shuttles available mm -hmm. but i would say that's probably less ideal uh, versus some place where you could just walk everywhere so don't expect for it to be the same as new york or la in that respect but then again as of lately i don't feel that i would feel super comfortable walking around la or new york Number eight on our list is golfing paradise. The St. George area has 21 courses within a 15 mile radius of St. George, 20 of which are public courses and one is a private course. There are 13 18 hole courses and a six nine hole and six nine hole layouts, making it a golfer's paradise. It's absolutely incredible. If you cope that with our perfect weather, for nearly 300 days a year, you could count on, you know, if you're already living here, you don't have to come down here. But a lot of folks from Salt Lake and other areas that get snow will come down here in the middle of 
January mm-hmm. um, and, and hid the course, and it's absolutely perfect. In the middle of summer, when it starts to get really hot, you could still um, go out and, and, and whack nine holes before the sun comes up and it gets too terribly hot. So really, if you're, if you're big into golf, I really don't think there's a better place that you could retire because the only thing you need is uh, time, you know. And even on those hot days, those days are deeply discounted. So if you want a better discount, you can golf when it's a little warmer. And it really all depends on your commitment to the sport or your commitment to saving money. Yeah. (laughs) There's a reason why location is the number one rule in real estate. So reason number nine, why St. George, Utah might be a great place for you to retire is our central location. Some retirees decide to relocate to another state based on solely how much money they'll save on taxes and living costs. While saving tax dollars is important, it's not the only consideration. Whenever clients focus exclusively on this topic, I like to ask them the following questions. How will this move impact your relationships with your family and friends? How far will you have to travel to see them? And what are the transportation costs? If you can make the trip now, will you be able to make this trip 10 years from now? I think those are all all the great questions to ask yourself prior to making that decision. St. George, Utah is conveniently located in the middle of Mountain West region. It is a vacation destination for anyone that wants to explore national parks, enjoy golfing, off-roading, or outdoor sports. So in the future, it may make it a, a more attractive place for your relatives to visit. SVU Airport has direct flights to Salt Lake City, Dallas, Denver, Las Vegas, with more direct flights coming in the near future. St. George, Utah is accessible via I-15 if you're traveling in a vehicle. It is in between Salt Lake City and Las Vegas. Las Vegas is just a two-hour drive. Um, Salt Lake City is a four-hour drive, and Los Angeles is about a six-hour drive. Local beauty, attractions, and all the golfing and off-roading that you could do here is likely to attract your family to come and visit you. I mean, it's not just that they're visiting you. There's also so much stuff to do here. Well, they might come visit you or they might come visit you to stay because they love it here so much. Exactly. And that's what actually happens to a lot of our clients. They move here and they say, well, what about my children? And then children decide to come out and visit them because they also have a reason to you know, go check out wherever grandma and grandpa moved. And then before you know it, they're calling us because their son and daughter are now, you know, also considering moving into. But the their area. children have children, and they see that our crime rate, which is so great, is so low, and they want to bring their family here and their kids to raise them here. Which is our next talking point. Next on our list, number ten, another great reason to retire in St. George, Utah, is our low crime rate. I think crime rate is important. I would say. If if you're sitting down and just planning out your retirement journey, you might not even know exactly where you will end up. If you're watching this video, chances are St. George, Utah is on your radar. I think a lot of it, as I mentioned in one of our earlier points, it is good to think of things. How will you handle these factors You know, five years from now, 10 years from now? Do you feel safe in your home? Do you feel safe getting in your vehicle and getting around? Do you, do you feel like there is a threat to your life while you're in your bed, in your sleep, when you're getting in and out of your vehicle? Things like that. Things like that are important. Maybe you have children or grandchildren living with you. Are are they safe? So to, to remove some of these subjective feelings, because Michonne and I, Michonne has lived here her whole life, and I've lived here for the last 10 years. Um, I have a, a a great example of something to compare it to. Fortunately, I haven't been back to Chicago for about 10 years, but 10 years ago. So from personal experience, even 10 years ago, crime rate in the city of Chicago, I mean, it's murder capital for a reason, is nowhere near to even remotely comparable to the crime rate in St. George. But don't take it from me. Let's take a look at one of our resources that we like to use for the statistical data. This website is called bestplaces.net, and you can go and check it out for yourself. But according to bestplaces.net, the crime rate in St. George, Utah is much lower than the national average. According to recent data, the violent crime rate in St. George is 11.2 basis point, which is about half of the U.S. average at 22.7 basis points. Similarly to the property crime rate, St. George is 29.9, significantly lower than the U.S. average at 35.4. This shows that overall, St. George has 
much safer environment than most places in the United States for both residents and visitors alike. And you can see some of the charts uh, listed here that show actually crime rate declining over a period of time. Now, to be completely fair, it only goes up to 2019. And I feel like the recent years is when the crime rate really started to change everywhere else. <clears throat> but, you know, surprisingly, and fortunately so, crime rate here in St. George remains incredibly low. You know, we have so many clients that come to first explore this area and they start asking us, you know, what are the bad parts of town? Uh, we haven't seen any graffiti. We haven't seen any panhandlers. We haven't seen any homeless people. None of the none of that standard um, sort of a array that happens in uh, a lot of the major cities across America right now. Unfortunately, it's still not something that you really see here in St. George. In fact, we just had some clients visit recently, and that was their biggest shock was they couldn't believe that we didn't have any graffiti or any um, trash anywhere. And they, they brought it up several times they kept bringing it up we just can't believe how clean it is here and as if they were looking for it yeah like well, where is it why are you hiding it from us yeah <laughs> and and that's just you know locals really take pride to, oh did you talk about the um the girls we saw at sand hollow yeah you know so <clears throat> that, that's that's our next point i think uh, a lot of locals really take pride and they take ownership in this community because i feel like well, a lot of people have moved here from other places and they like to support uh, traditional Southern Utah values, uh, you know, really calling this place your home and taking ownership. And we saw these two girls who were just at the beach at San Hollow, and they were, they were done with whatever they were doing and they were picking up trash after others. And you really, when you go to these local state parks, you won't find trash and you'll, you'll often see people picking up trash after others. I think it's really nice. And I, I think that more do more good creates good when you see other people taking ownership in the area and, and taking care of these places. It really, really makes you want to do the same thing. 100%. Folks, that concludes our list of top 10 reasons why you may want to consider relocating to St. George, Utah. If we haven't answered, and I'm sure that we haven't answered all of the questions you may still have, as you may be in various stages of your research, maybe you're booking your trip here, maybe you just started, regardless of where you're at in that process, we would absolutely love to hear from you. And we have no way of getting a hold of you. However, we'll give you a couple of convenient options to get a hold of us. Our phone numbers is probably the easiest way. They're in the description below this video. There's also, if you want to be more official, there is a link for Calendarly. So you could click on that link, get on our calendar, and we could set up an obligation-free consultation. We'll answer all of your questions you may have about the area, what it's like to live here, what it's like to retire here, what are some of the best places that may work for you. Share a couple of your personal must-haves and deal breakers, some of the things you're looking for in your ideal retirement place or and we will pair you with the perfect neighborhood. And there is no need to be super official. If you'd like to, that's great. If not, feel free to call or text us anytime. We are seriously always available and we would absolutely love to hear from you. And if you know of somebody that could benefit from this video, of course, share it with them. If you don't know of anybody that could benefit from this video, just give it a like so that the YouTube algorithm can get it out to more people and hopefully more people could benefit from this information. I will link another video right up here that may be beneficial for your relocation journey or may answer more questions. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you will see all of our future videos about this area. And until the next one.